Okay, this lesson is for fifth grade. This is chapter one, lesson four, classifying animals. I'm going to preface this lesson by saying a lot of this material you learned about in fourth grade, so you should be comfortable and familiar with it. Uh, we're just going to elaborate on it again and kind of refresh. Um, what we know from fourth grade as well as knowing from previous lessons in this chapter is that animals were classified into two groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates had a backbone, and invertebrates are animals that do not have a backbone. Now, I'm going to s discuss the different types of invertebrates, and I'm going to split them into two groups. What you see here are called the lower invertebrates, so they are more simple um, animals are simple invertebrates. And they are sponges, cnidarians, as you see at the bottom, and worms over to the right. Let's start with sponges. Sponges have no organization, no true organization at all. Um, they're the only animals without real tissues or organs, and they are asymmetrical. Now, asymmetrical is a body plan that cannot be divided into mirror images. No matter how you cut it, if you showed it its reflection in a mirror, it would not look the same, wouldn't match. Uh, the sponge, its body structure is kind of arranged around a tunnel-like canal. It's filled with a lot of tiny pores or holes. Um, the word pore gives sponges their phylum name, which is periphera. All the members of the phylum periphera live in water. So sponges are simple, not much to them. They have two cell layers, and that's sponges. That's why they're the lowest of the lower invertebrates. Next on the list are cnidarians. Cnidarians include your jellyfish, your sea anemones, your corals, your hydras. They're all cnidarians. Yes, it starts with a C, but the C is silent. Pronounce it cnidarians. They're soft body aquatic creatures, which means they live in water. Um, they're not asymmetrical like the sponge. Then these guys are radial, have radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is a body plan in which all body parts are arranged around a central point. So kind of like a circle. If you draw a circle and you have a dot in the middle and you cut it, it's symmetrical any way you cut it. That's radial symmetry. Okay. I'm going to erase that for you. Now, an organism with radial symmetry has more than one line, so you can divide it into um, two images. So, cnidarians have a mouth. They have tentacles with stinging cells, like the jellyfish. Um, they have muscle tissues as well. They hunt and their stingers shoot out like little harpoons. The poison inside of those stinging cells helps them to capture other animals, so that's how they get their food. Um, once they're stung, they're able to hold on to the victim with the tentacle and move it toward their mouth. So that again is cnidarians. And now we talk about our worms. There are three groups of worms, which are your flatworms, your round worms and your segmented worms, which are your earthworms, uh, your leeches, stuff like that. All worms have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is a body plan that can be divided only along one plane. So if you have um, an image, so let's say, let's just look at this worm. I'll erase that. Look at this worm, and if you, remember, you cut it down the middle. You can only divide it into two. You can't cut it this way, and you can't cut it that way. It's just a one, one way. Okay. Bilateral symmetry. The prefix bi means two, like bicycle. Okay, so that's how you can remember along one line, on two planes. R radial symmetry. It's a dot in the middle of a circle, and it has many. Asymmetrical is no symmetry. So back to worms. Flatworms have a flat body plan. They have a head with simple eyes and a mouth. Um, 
They only have one body opening and undigested food must leave through its mouth. So what goes in their mouth also comes out their mouth. It's gross. Roundworms or nematodes, they have a simple digestive system and nervous system. Um, you really find them inside of other animals. So if you take your pet to the vet and they say they've got worms, it's probably these guys. Um, flat, the Flatworms also live inside of other animals, by the way. These guys have a one-way digestive system, so what comes in one way goes out the other way. And your segmented worms, your earthworms, uh, or annelids is another word for them. They have a body plan that's divided into sections or segments, and they've got a two-way digestive system and organs. They've got a stomach, they've got a heart, they've got a brain, so they're the most developed worm of all these worms. So again, these are the lower invertebrates, sponges, cnidarians, and worms. Sponges are asymmetrical, meaning no symmetry. Cnidarians have radial symmetry, which means they are arranged around a central point like a circle. And worms have bilateral symmetry, which means they have one plane that divides them into two mirror images. Now let's discuss the more complex invertebrates. The complex invertebrates include your mollusks, your echinoderms, and your arthropods. Um, this phyla has very many different characteristics. Let's start with the mollusks. Mollusks share the same body plan. They have a muscular foot or tentacles. It's called the mantle and a mass of internal organs. Okay, The mollusk, as you can see, there is a garden snail. And so these live on land. You also have your mollusks that live under the water. They're aquatic like the octopus, your oysters, your clams. So they've got a hard shell with a soft body. Um, they have a very specialized organs. They have heart. They have gills to breathe with. They have a very well-developed nervous system. Squid and octopus have really good eyesight and a large brain for that fact. They have bilateral symmetry, so you can only cut them into two mirror images. Okay. Talk about your echinoderms, that's your sea stars. Notice I said sea star, not starfish. Fish are vertebrates. Vertebrates have backbones. This guy doesn't. This is a sea star. You also have your sea urchins and your sea cucumbers. Um, they have a hardened skeleton inside the body. That's called your endoskeleton. And they are spiny. They have spiny skins that poke throughout. They're really bumpy. These guys usually have radial symmetry, as you can see in the picture of that sea star. You have a central point, and you can cut it in multiple ways. So that's radial symmetry. Um, they use water pressure to help them feed, breathe, and move. And seawater enters the system, so they moves it to different parts of their body under pressure. Uh, the system ends in the echinoderm's tube feet, which clings to the surfaces like suction cups, and that's why the sea star sticks to things. And then we have our arthropods. Now you see the picture there of the crab. That's only one of many arthropods. There are several. You have your arachnids and spiders. You have your insects, your lobsters, your crabs, your centipedes, your millipedes. This is the largest invertebrate group. Half of the world's species are arthropods. Um, they have a very efficient body plan. They are light and small. They have a hard skeleton on the outside of the body. It's the exoskeleton, which provides strength and protection. All arthropods have bilateral symmetry. They have a segmented body. They have paired limbs on either side of it. Um, these limbs can be wings, they can be claws, they can be anything like that. Um, they have many legs in some cases, and that helps them to move quickly. They have a very simple but a really efficient nerve system and sensory system so they know what's going around. Just think of a fly. If you ever try to get a hold of one of those things, they know where you are and they're very quick to react and it's really hard to catch them. So they have a very good nervous and sensory system. Okay. So again, your more complex invertebrates include mollusks, echinoderms, and arthropods. Mollusks have bilateral symmetry. Echinoderms have radial symmetry. Arthropods have bilateral symmetry. So these are all the invertebrates. Now let's discuss the vertebrate groups. There are many vertebrate groups of which we discussed, and we know vertebrates have a backbone. They all have bilateral symmetry. They all have endoskeletons. So that's something that you can keep in mind for all of these groups that we discussed from here on out. 
All of them are bilateral. All of them have endoskeletons. Let's talk about a few. We're going to discuss fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Let's start with fish. As you can see, fish have three groups. Um, you have your bony fish, your jawless fish, and your cartilaginous fish. Let's discuss um, the jawless fish. In the middle, that includes your lamprey, eels, your, your hagfish. They have a backbone, obviously, they have flexible nerve cords. They don't have jaws, so they have to suck in their food. If you ever see a picture of these guys, these are not pretty. They're pretty ugly. So, jawless, no jaw. Now, your cartilaginous fish, they bend easier, they wiggle. If you feel the end of your nose or your ears, that's cartilage. Sharks and rays are cartilaginous fish. Um, they have paired fins and jaws. Bony fish have a nerve cord covered by bone and not cartilage. Um, so they, like sharks, they have jaws and fins. They have swim bladders that allow them to go up and down. Uh, they have moving flaps that push the water into their gills and allows oxygen to get in while moving, while not moving in the water. Okay, so bony fish more skeleton um, of bone. Cartilaginous fish have a, a skeleton almost that made of cartilage, and the jawless fish don't have jaws. Amphibians. There are three types of amphibians. Your, your jumping amphibians, which are your frogs and toads, your tailed amphibians, which are your newts and salamanders, and your blind limbless Sicilians, which have no eyes or legs, and they're underground. They kind of look like earthworms, but you can't see them. Um, what's special about amphibians is that they spend part of their life in the water, the first part, as a, as a youth, and then as they grow older and into an adult, they live on the land. Um, frogs start out as tadpoles and they eventually grow and develop their legs and lungs and start breathing air and they turn into frogs. Um, but the adult amphibians don't leave the water for too long. They do have to go back and, and say that they're not aquatic, meaning they don't live in water, but they do need it for their skin to stay moist. They also go to lay their eggs. So that's all about amphibians. Your different types of reptiles. There are 7,000 different kinds of reptiles. These are just a few, as you can see. Uh, reptiles, true to land, it has one or two lungs. They have thick, scaly skins, waterproof. Uh, they include your lizards, your snakes, turtles, alligators, crocodiles. They don't generate a lot of body heat because they're cold-blooded. They like to stay and sit in the sun and sun themselves, absorb that heat. Um, that way, when they go in the water, they are warmed up. Okay. So scales, um, these animals, that's an important thing to remember. Birds have several features different from the other ones. They have four, rather than four legs, they all have two feet and two wings. They lay eggs, they have feathers, they all have a beak. And they have light, hollow bones. Um, some thing about the feathers, they've got downy feathers, body feathers, flight feathers, which you can see the downy or next to them, that's what you see on the babies that keeps them warm. Body feathers is what you mainly see, what falls to the ground. Your flight feathers is what helps give them that lift. Um, birds are warm-blooded and they can keep a constant temperature. They can fly around and go wherever. Um, feathers are sturdy enough to hold up the stresses of flight. Uh, the world's fastest bird is the peregrine falcon. It can fly up to about 200 miles an hour. Like we discussed with the bones, are light and hollow. Gives them a stiff frame between that rib cage and backbone that keeps them together. Allows the muscles to help them to, to move. And here is a picture of a skeleton of a bird. As you can see, light, hollow, the keel. What you see here keeps everything together for them. Finally, the last thing we're going to talk about are mammals. You're a mammal. I'm a mammal. And here's your characteristics that make mammals mammals. Um, things like nursing. Mothers give milk to their babies. All mammals are warm-blooded. They have hair or fur. They have very large brains. Um, they are warm. Like I said, they're warm-blooded and generate their own body heat. So there are Three subgroups of mammals, which you need to know, and you see them here. Um, 
which are monotremes, marsupials, and placental mammals. A monotreme, like the spiny anteater here, is a mammal that lays eggs. Not all mammals lay eggs, just the monotremes. This guy and the platypus lay eggs. After the young hatch, they're fed milk from their mothers, so they still nurse. So uh, other than, than that, laying eggs, they're just like mammals. Now marsupials, like the koala, the possum, the kangaroo, they are pouched mammals. They give birth to a partially developed offspring, and then they carry that developing young in their pouch on the front of their bodies. Um, most of these guys are found in Australia. You're not going to find them here unless you see them in a zoo. And then mammals like you and me and the tiger here are all placental mammals, which means that you develop inside your mother for a, a period of time, and then you are born mature, a lot more mature than monotremes and marsupials, so you come out very well developed. So again, the three subgroups here, monotremes, marsupials, placental mammals. So that's everything that we need to discuss today with classifying animals. Again, remember your lower invertebrates, your simple ones, your more complex invertebrates. Um, invertebrates, again, don't have a backbone. Remember, vertebrates do have a backbone. They include your birds, your reptiles, your amphibians, your fish, um, and your mammals. And also remember about symmetry. You had asymmetrical symmetry, which means you didn't have any symmetry at all. Radial symmetry was symmetry based around a central point, and bilateral symmetry was how you divide one image with one line, and you get two images. Okay, if you have any questions about Chapter 1, Lesson 4, Classifying Animals, please feel free to ask, ask me or send me a message on Edmodo.